So I live in Brooklyn um, in my G1 residency in the opening circle. We were asked uh, some question that prompted the idea that I probably should bike here at some point. Uh, so I said it in that opening G1 session that I, this is something I would like to do. Um, I'm, I'm, this is my G4 semester now and I realized this is my last opportunity to do it. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, in the end of it, was about 500 miles or so because I took a zigzag route up the Hudson Valley and then over and uh, kind of based on where I knew people to host me. Um, in thinking about uh, what to say for this, Karen asked me, I did not, just for the, the record, uh, to, to do this. Um, there are two things that comes to mind. One is, uh, <clears throat> so as a Goddard student, um, one of the things that attracted me to the school is uh, the emphasis on learning being holistic and knowing being and doing um, and taking lessons from real life and, and applying them or sort of like mm -hmm. being made to think about them. Uh, so I think that there are two interesting stories to tell from, from this trip or the takeaways for me. One um, is that, <clears throat> so most days I was riding between 80 and 100 miles, give or take. Uh, it took six days to get up here. Um, the hardest day by far was the, the one day that I had only set myself up for 44 miles. Uh, and I think, <clears throat> so I'd, I'd given myself a 44 mile day to give myself kind of a break, assuming it would take just a couple of hours. Um, and then the entire day was uphill. Uh, and I think what compounded it was my attitude throughout the day of the entire time I was like, this was supposed to be my day break off, you know, and, um, and here I am struggling. It took me all day to get there. Uh, and you know, take what lesson you will from that, but I think that was a, a, one of the more profound days of the trip. Um, and then the second, second part of it uh, <clears throat> was, um, so I rode across country uh, two summers ago, 4,000 miles, um, and I am using the same bike with the same tires, <clears throat> which probably is not the most ideal thing to do. So I took five tubes with me. Uh, tubes are, if you get a flat, that's how to replace mm -hmm. uh, your flat. Um, the entire summer I biked across country last two, a uh, couple years ago, I only got three flats the entire summer. So I was, I thought five uh, would be plenty of tubes. Uh, and then the day I was riding in here, um, I'd already ridden 450 miles and about 50 miles out, I started getting one flat after another. So I got five flats on that last day. Um, and <clears throat> The, and I was in rural Vermont and I used that last tube and I was still about 30, 40 miles out with nothing around me. And I was really starting to be like, oh gosh, if I get another flat, uh, I have no sort of backup option or n nothing nothing to do. So please last me, you one tube. Um, so I got about 20 miles in uh, and then I got a flat. And it so happened <clears throat> that I got a flat in the only town I had passed for a very long time and the only place, and it, there happened to be a bike store in this town, which was uh, truly, truly incredible. Um, so I was able to get the, the tubes and whatnot. Uh, I think from both of these, um, what I take, the entire trip had just been like smooth sailing downhill, flying through the through the the, the couple of days. I don't think it would be all that interesting of a, of a trip, right? And so I, I think really the intention of a trip like that is to put yourself through challenge and kind of see what your limits are and, and overcome them. So. Well, thank you so much.